Good afternoon. I'm Ariana Cohen Halberstam. I'm the artistic director of Boston Jewish Film. I am so thrilled to be here with you all today um, for this very special lesson from Rabbi Kevin Hale to Sofer Stam. Many of you have probably already seen Rabbi Hale in the beautiful short film directed by Miriam Lewin called Commandment 613. It is screening as part of our Where Do We Go From Here short film program. If you haven't yet seen the film, I hope you will check it out. It is streaming with the Boston Jewish Film Festival through Sunday, uh, November 15th. And now it is my pleasure to turn it over to Rabbi Kevin Hale, just a bit of, um, a bit of what's going on here today. We would love for you all to be a part of this as a community. So we're gonna be sending invites for you to come up um, on camera. If you're comfortable joining us, please do. And um, if you wanna join us without camera, but then turn it on at the end to show us what you've done, we would love that as well. So now Rabbi Kevin Hale. Thank you so much. And thank you all for coming. You know, we are very mindful that it is uh, getting towards Shabbat and here in Western Massachusetts, we probably have another 10 or 15 minutes before the sunset, but um, we are, um, we'll end at 3.50 and it's just enough time to um, shift gears and, and, and light if you if you light 18 minutes before. I uh, wanna, first of all, thank, I feel like saying I wanna thank the Academy, but thank you, Ariana and, and all of the staff uh, and donors um, for accepting the film. I want to thank, um, and, Really, it's such an honor to be here. And uh, I want to actually thank my wife, Ruth, who is here. And she's going to be the second camera person when um, we're looking at, at the piece of paper. Um, and of course, you know, uh, really what an honor it was to be the subject along with the Torah, in honor of me and honor of Torah, um, Miriam and Randy uh, and, and the film. Um, so, just briefly, I'm going to reflect a little bit on, on the film, and I want to show you a bit of the experience of writing, uh, maybe not with quill and parchment, but um, still fulfilling that mitzvah by, by writing these letters in the style of a Torah script. And we'll start big, and we'll work our way smaller. And uh, at the end, uh, those of us who wrote Shabbat Shalom, we could, we could greet each other by showing it to each other, and then um, Shabbat. So, you know, if you do have a calligraphy marker of some kind or even just a pen, I highly recommend just start doodling now and we'll, we'll get to it in a minute. So just reflecting on the film, two, two particular things have jumped out at me in the last screening. And one is, and it's kind of poignant, it's a, um, it's a portrait of what it was like when we could get physically that close to each other and in and Torah. And uh, I have to say, this is my first time teaching through this medium. Um, and the other, uh, so, you know, it's still Torah. We can still love Torah, but um, that, that physical closeness is, is something that that film portrays that we don't do right now. And the other is there was this particular moment when um, I was quoted as saying, let's play with pay. And then I started to write a Kabbalistic pay and were this to be a longer film, how much time could we devote to all of the letters that we play with? So really we're here to play with, with some of the letters. And this is really a time also to introduce an honor. Uh, this was my teacher, Rabbi Eric Ray. And um, you met him in the film, but uh, he really played with Hebrew his entire life. and. Uh, Apparently he, he recognized 2000 different ways of doing this Hebrew alphabet. And he would have loved this, even though he didn't engage in uh, higher technology. So, um, you know, we all are part of this mitzvah 613 of, of writing and perpetuating Torah. And that includes even writing um, a, few, a few words of it. So let's, um, let's get started and I'm going to, um, I want you to imagine that, uh, well, this piece of charcoal is the end of my quill. And you may have uh, a calligraphy marker that looks something like this. And for those of us who have dabbled in any kind of calligraphy, um, generally speaking, a Western calligraphy is made with a broad edged pen. So you have to imagine this is a very, very long feather. 
or if it's Sephardic, a very long stick, and it's cut with an edge. And usually the edge has a little bit of a crack in it to help the ink flow. And uh, so imagine this. And when we get to working with the paper, uh, that pen size is going to be about one tenth of this. So starting large. And I just want to show you some about layout and forming of letters and what we can do with this incredible technological invention a few thousand years ago, uh, shortly before Sinai, of the calligraphy pen. And just to keep it in perspective, um, the pen that we use for doing this practice, which mine is uh, five millimeters, is still about 10 times as big as the pen that was used. I guess I'll just... Um, is that working now? Now we're going to try the technology of, you can see that, inside to fill in. So ideally, what we want to do is make our letters as beautiful as possible, large, and then one one hundredth of the size, can we still make them that beautiful? And that is um, an ideal. So um, well, let's just start with what this pen is. Now, I just want to point out um, oh, two things. Uh, well, first of all, uh, this is, I, I call it a horn book, which is an old, an old uh, way of the things that you want to study are on a single sheet. And perhaps it's posted or being sent. And it's really, it's a simplified olive bet. Um, and you're welcome to just pick up pen and start writing. And we'll get to as many letters uh, as we can. So um, first thing is that we have written Torah and played with Hebrew all over the world, all along. And whether we use um, a stick pen and write smoothly on gavil or leather, or we use um, a quill pen and we write it on the velvety surface of Torah, Cloth, which is like um, yeah, velvet. The letter forms are basically the same, and yet the angle of the pen or the thickness or the style of writing is different. But let's just look at what we do with this thing. Now, in English calligraphy, generally speaking, your pen is this way. And if you want to do a letter E, maybe it looks something like this, not too shabby. And in Hebrew, more or less, it is upright. So if we're doing a letter, well, let's start with the beginning, which is a reishi, a bet. So what we have is um, 90 degree orientation. If you were to write a bet in the English way, it would be very sad and disturbing. And, and same thing if to write an E in the upright position. Now, if you take your pen and uh, you notice that generally speaking, if you go sideways, you get a broad image. And if you go down, you get a thin image. Uh, you can go turn it a little bit and draw it down and get that kind of thing. You can change its thickness. And you can also use the very corner of your quill, say, imagine that this was a pool of ink, and just with the very corner, draw up little wisps. That'll be the crowns that go in some letters. So, you know, I invite you to play with um, this tool. So, I'm just going to show you one more thing, and then let's do some layout, and we're going to start um, writing, and we'll see how small uh, we get. So I mentioned that um, there are different styles and different tools. And when you look at the Ashkenazi Beit Yosef, which is sort of the classic Central European style of Hebrew that we're used to seeing in the Torah, um, let, me, let me write an olive. It probably looks something like this. There's a diagonal. There's a yud here. Um, I'm kind of German, so I, I'd like to be upright, but a Polish is at an angle, or you could turn it. And then there is a downward, mm, backwards, upside down, cut. 
and more or less that is an olive. Now, the thing about a quill, a feather pen, is that it's like a chisel. And the one thing you can't easily do with a chisel, I'm gonna to go to the other side now, you can not easily push it forward, but if it's a chisel, you can pull it back or you can go sideways. So it lends itself to this style of writing. Um, now let's imagine that we are using a stick or a reed pen that really is pretty much like a modern felt tip marker. And generally speaking in our tradition, that kind of pen is used on a very smooth surface. So it's a more fluid motion, but like a felt tip marker, you can go backwards and forwards. So that's why uh, sort of classic, I'm gonna go to this side again, Aleph in Sephardic tradition is, okay, it's the same motion, but it might be a little bit elegant like that. That's lovely. And then we have this, and then it could do that. And it could go this way, and it could do that. So what we see is those places where the, the pen looks like it has to go forward is an indicator of um, a style of writing that comes from Spain or, or the Middle East. I'm gonna make a loud sound and then we're going to, um, let's do some layout. Okay. Um, what we're leading up to is just a simple exercise of writing the words Shabbat Shalom. And um, sometimes I like to say, Everybody says Shabbat Shalom, but what does anyone do about it? So what we're going to do about it is we're going to write the words. And if you refer back to the 613th commandment to write Torah, ideally every one of us should do it, really physically do it. You have this experience that when you write something, write this song for yourself, when you write it yourself, it takes on a level of meaning that's different than just hearing it or seeing it or saying it. So... Um, I just have an example of Shabbat Shalom, and it happens to be a beautiful calligraphy by uh, a friend, a neighbor of ours, Peggy Davis in Coleraine, and she was a kind of a pioneer um, Hebrew calligrapher. I should say that, that, that many, many years ago when I got interested in, in this, I, I asked her about, um, about the, the, the craft of writing Torah, and she really taught me a lot about calligraphy. Um, anyway. So this is a proof text. Remember, we don't. if it was Torah, we wouldn't want to trust our memory. So we'll be referring to these letters as we write them in a, in a different script. Um, I just, I want to jump in. Somebody, somebody Ooh. asked a question about how to hold the pen, if you can. All right, so, um, so this is, uh, I'm, I'm going to be, ideally, if you're right-handed, your pen is cut at an angle so that when you're sitting in front and your arm is in a comfortable position, the edge is upright. Um, but I would say, you know, generally speaking, the, 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 the broad edge of the, of the end of your pen should be more or less upright. Does that, does that answer? It might be a little bit clearer when I'm sitting down with a pen and I'm working on the same scale as you. But good question. Um, let me do this. We'll pause a little bit in between uh, this scale and one tenth, and um, it takes some questions. So this is a powerful tool, and it's also a measuring tool. So if you if you um, have a pencil or or something, you want to use a straight edge. Hebrew letters generally in the Torah are written hanging down from a guideline. And the question is, um, and there's margins on either side of the column. Generally speaking, we, we're gonna have our text in Torah be uh, right and left justified. But the question is, well, how big to make these letters? So I'm gonna write a letter bet 
And I want you to notice the proportions of this. Um, that has a, a roof and a side and a floor, and it needs to keep on going or it might be confused with the top. So in the sort of classic European style of writing, this width and this width and this width are the same. So it's a proportion of one to one to one. Now, when I learned to write a letter bet, I wrote it something like that. And to my eye, what that says is, well, this little thickness is one unit. This is maybe 30 or 40, and this is one again. So we're going to be writing letters that are, are very compact. And this proportion, one, two, three, if it's a little bit different, one to two and a quarter to one, it has a very different feel to it. So, okay, we're going to write a letter. Um, in fact, we're going to write the word sofa in a moment. But what about the next line? So generally speaking, if you measure off one, two, three, that's pretty much for the letters, and one, two, three, and that's generally for the white space. Sorry, there's a switch plate under here. Um, Lamids could go up and cost could go down. We've got this white space in between. So that's more or less what we're working with. Um, if you look at the very edge of a Torah, you'll see there's little um, pinpricks. And those pinpricks, which are usually off the margin, were from when the parchment was being prepared. So it would be here, and it would be here, and maybe even there would be a little guideline in between. So let's see. I'm going to write a word just to demonstrate. And if we're writing Torah one day, we would get up and we would wash our hands and we would pray and um, write Amalek's name and cross it out and then sit down to write. And here's here's the word. It's the word is sofer that we're going to write. So not writing from memory. And remember, it's good to sing out the letter and the word as you go along. So we've got sofer, sonef. Vav, it's generally my favorite letter, but not every day. Hey, and this is a kind of bluesy way of doing it. I got from my teacher Eric. Rage, Sophie. So, if you know Hebrew letters, we have 22 of them, and five of them take a final form, which we can call Sophie. And Resh is actually not one of the final ones, but every letter in this style of writing is called a Sophie, the final. And of course, it's a reminder that we're getting to the end, and do we want to leave space for the next word? Or if we don't have a word, maybe it's a letter that we need to extend. Okay. So, you know, just. Um, Hebrew, powerfully built on roots. And if you look at the S, and the O, and the F, and the E, and the R, well, we've got the Sefer, which is a book, and we've got a Sipur, which is a story, and a Misfar, which is a number, and Misapher to tell. And there's this connection between um, counting and uh, story writing, or recounting. Anyway. And, uh, you know, we wrote a word, we sung it out, we checked our proof text, and it seems, it seems to match. So, you know, maybe I will, just before going to uh, small, I will ask if there's any questions. We're going to be um, changing our scale now. There, I'm not seeing any questions in the chat, okay. but if anyone does have any, please write them in and I, and I will pass them on. You know, I just realized that, um, uh, let's just do a little bit about styles of writing. So, um, you know, when I was playing with the pay, uh, pay is a beautiful letter in, in, in Ashkenazi writing. In, in Beit Yosef especially, there's this lovely technique of trying to uh, put a letter 
inside the pay, in, in the white spaces. And um, in a lot of those Czech Holocaust Torahs, uh, they were written with Kabbalistic elements. And you find things like, oh, a pay that's got a psychedelic spiral in it. Or maybe it has little dealy boppers or legs. And these aren't really traditionally part of the letter, but there's there's meaning there. So again, when I said play with pay, I would, I'd be serious. You know, we have a lot of latitude, even in Torah writing, which is very strictly defined, about exactly how to form the letters. And if you make your olive like this or like this, as long as say this is not touching, it's it's still an olive. Okay, so. There's two letters that are really sort of indicator letters, and um, it's, it's, it's just lovely to look at it. So generally speaking, um, an olive that is completely upright, or even like that, just everything is at 90 degrees, uh, a German influence. And if it's 90 degrees, but then it's, then it's 45. Probably some region that we think of as as, as Poland. Um, if it's all of an angle, more of a Russian influence. And then a lovely a lovely thing that um, you have an olive, oops, have an olive, and the upper part reaches up high above the line. Just distinctive to what we think of as, as the former Czechoslovakia. So if we're all inspired by this workshop and decide we're gonna go ahead and write Torah, it would be natural that we develop a style that's based on the experience of living in New England. So I, I don't know what that would be. Okay, so is that all? Yeah, I think we're gonna, let's, let's move. We're gonna go to a smaller scale and I'm going to Say if you have um, a calligraphy marker or a magic marker, or you know, even if you don't, you can take two two pens or pencils and put them together, and you can actually you know do pretty pretty fair calligraphy. Let me see that this way. So by any means necessary, um, but something that could do a broad. So I'm going to be sitting and um, let's sit down to, to work. So, okay, thank you, thank you. Yes. So I want you to just imagine with me that we have a, a blank piece of parchment. It's maybe two by three foot. And um, we're gonna be doing some writing. So again, now we're going to one tenth scale. Um, and the first thing is about those that laying out of the lines. So if we just okay, so as a measuring tool, uh, keep it in the upright position and just have these boxes sort of stacking up, staggered. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now. I pretty much know what's the space because this is five millimeters and I'm gonna multiply it by six. But <clears throat> now I'm gonna use a pencil and just do our first line. And then our next line. And I might eyeball it and just, we're laying out our parchment. And remember, if this were if this were a real piece of parchment, we wouldn't just be eyeballing it. We would measure out little pin, put little pinpricks beyond the margins, and that's where the straight edge would go. So with that, just a few letters that I'd like to sort of introduce you to before we we. Um, we greet each other with a, with a written Shabbat Shalom. So in Beit Yosef Ashkenazi writing, there's really a number of um, variations on the same theme. So let me show you what I mean. 
Um, we have a letter Yud. And if we have a letter Yud that's written, okay, it could have a little Oketz on it. It could even have a little Tag, seven out of the 22 letters that in Torah script take triple crowns, um, but in other styles, we add them anyway. Um, so that's that. Have I had, I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's another question about upright. And now that we're looking at you um, this in this way, can you show the difference between upright and sideways? Yes, yes. In terms of how people so hold their pen. I'm gonna go back to the letter bet because it's, it's a, a good letter. So if we're being Ashkenazi in German, keeping it upright, the bet, is in the upright position like this. Actually, I twist a little bit so that there is a, a shelf here. But if I use the, the English style, or which is sideways, it lends itself fine to doing, say, a letter E, but it doesn't, it doesn't work for Hebrew. So if you think that the upright strokes are the skinny direction and the sideways strokes are the broad, um, that works. Incidentally, you know, if, if my quill were cut at an angle, I would have a comfortable, comfortable position. I'm right-handed and that, that angle of the quill would make the, the edge upright. But instead I actually have to turn my arm. If you're a lefty, what you may find is that uh, my strokes are perfectly good, but you would reverse the direction. If you think about it, this were a quill or a chisel. There's a, I'm sorry, there's a question. I, I don't know if it's possible for you to, to have uh, the camera behind you, but there's a request to have, I don't oh, know if it's possible to, or, to, or to turn the camera so that you're, um, so that you're, like so that it's not about, upright. There we go. I think that. that's gonna be better for everyone. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you, thank you. Um, every other time I've taught, we've all stayed upright. So, okay, the letter Yud, and look at the variations in the letter Yud. If it's the same shape, but it's longer, it becomes a Vav. And if it's wider and longer, it's a Resh. And if it's wider and even longer, uh, it's, a, it's a Kaf or a Chaf Sofit. So, that's all kind of one stroke. When, let's do another one. Uh, generally speaking, these letters don't have an edge, okay? But then there's a series of letters that, that do. So we don't have any edge here. But if you have um, a dalad, it doesn't start here because that would make it look like a resh. It starts in a little bit, say there, and it goes down to here. Now, how you get from here to here is all about the style of writing that you do. So for example, I like doing this particular Ashkenazi flourish where you start here, but you twist your quill. You actually just spin it in your fingers and you get something that looks like that. And it's very satisfying. Now, if that dalad which could have what that creation, were narrower, then it would be uh, a Zion. Now, you could confuse perhaps a Vav and a Zion, but Zion is one of those letters that takes triple crowns. Um, there's other letters that, that have this shape. And uh, in, for example, the letter Hey is in this style of writing. Oh, other ways that we get from here to here. You can keep it in the same position and have it like that. You can um, turn the quill and do a very thin line. So there's a lot of ways that, um, that we do this, but the main thing is that there be a little overhang. So other letters that have this Zion element are letters like Shin. And Shin has three pieces, and one of them on the left-hand side is like a Zion, but then it has other parts as well. Let's see, a Tav. 
Now a tav, or a hey, I'm sorry. And here I'm gonna start with something that looks like a dalid, and then put a little piece here. And there it's a hey. And if it attaches like this, then it's a tav. So this is even enough for us to kind of just get, get going. That as you look at letters in this style of writing, um, they're sort of a vocabulary of, of strokes. You know, there's one more, which is, um, this is the letter kaf. And think of a kaf as being like a resh, and then it has a bait bottom, but instead of overhanging, it stops, it just kisses right here. Another variation. And since we have all of 13 minutes or 12 minutes, how about a gimel? A gimel you could think of as being um, like a very narrow dalid, but it pulls back. And then that, that shape again just moves over and it just kisses. Unfortunately, it takes crowns as well. So um, I think I want to take a minute or two and just walk through a few other letters, but um, and then let's write let's write something together. Uh, are there any questions? Okay. So, uh, no questions. Okay. Okay. So you know. Let me just go through the olive bet and we'll see um, if there's anything we want to stop at before we're ready for Shabbat. So and you can you can you can you can write with me, you could just sing with me. Shabbat shalom. Yeah. Olive. Now I like to do it at an angle and like this. Bet. A roof, a side. Turn the quill a bit and have it go over. Gimel. Think of it as being, you know, we could almost go straight down, but you want to get this leg out of the way and then turn the quill like the bet and just have it kiss. And it takes triple crowns. Dalid. Broad top. Move in so there's an overhang and go down to this corner. And I love to twist like that. Hey, it's as if we're making a dalid and then a little yud here. Sometimes I've been asked, you know, is there anything particular about your style? And when I write an Esther Megillah, so Esther Megillah is all about Haman and Mordecai and Esther, doesn't have the name of God. But when I write Haman's name in a Megillah, I like to make this really, really, really look like a Yud. Because in my mind, I think, oh, Yud and Hay in Haman's name. There's God's name. Uh, a, before, oh, sorry. <laughs> before you move on, there, there are a few questions coming in that I think are you can maybe demonstrate in the upcoming Nothing. letters. Uh, one is about how to do that twist of the pen. Okay. And the well, other is about doing the little dots on top of the crown. So if you can demonstrate, oh, okay. get to relevant letters. To, to do the twist, it's just the same way that we get to Carnegie Hall. And really, it's just it's just practicing. You know, try, um, really, try, don't worry about letters, but just try drawing your, your pen down. And as you do it, just, just twist it from side to side. You know, it gets broader, it gets narrower. And then instead of just going like that, then sweep it around and let's see what happens. Can you do it over here? Okay. Okay. Uh, so really, I would say it's a matter of, of, of play. And um, the sheet that I provided, um, it's somewhat simplified, but within that you can you can you can play a lot. Um, I'll share that again. It, yes. The other question was. The other question was about the dots on the top of the crown. How right. you make, how so, you, you know, um, when you have one of those letters, like the shin that we're going to do in Shalom, um, the left hand side should take triple crowns. And it could be drawn, you know, one, two, three, it could be done that way. Um, but another way is 
to, you know, when the ink is first put down, it's, it's really a little puddle of ink. You have to be very careful about not smudging. And instead of um, drawing it, people of the book, if you've read it, there's something about a cat hair whisker. It's the idea that a little whisker of ink is just pulled out, just pulled out. And then you just stop momentarily and rest the corner. And that could be the dot. It's something that is really you need to do with thick liquid ink. And maybe, maybe we'll be a, um, I should say, if any of you have more questions or are interested in doing more, you're welcome to contact me. But for now, you know, we could just say that we're, we're drawing it very lightly. And, you know, this is one of the ways that scribes have really embellished letters. Um, if you want to draw attention to your, your artistry or to a particular letter, you might make it into fireworks. Okay, I'm going to do a few more letters and then, and then let's make Shabbat. So, hey, Vav, Zion. Chet is a letter that is in Ashkenazi writing, usually two Zions that are stuck together. Chet, Tet, which you could think of as a Zion with a cough next to it. And let's look at Lamed, and then I think we're ready for Shabbat. Lamed. So Lamed is the only letter that is tall. And in Ashkenazi writing, it's like this. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. And one way of thinking of it is that it's a Vav sitting on top of a cuff. Here's your Vav, and here's your cuff. I love making a Lamed in the Sephardic script because it can all be done in one motion and make look something like this. Okay. And as long as we have a mem in Shabbat Shalom, let's just get to the mem and then um, let's write together. Mem, you could think of the way that a Lamed is a kaf and a vav. Well, a mem is sort of a kaf and the vav next to it. And then they just kiss. My teacher Eric loved to do this in five strokes because the mem reminds us of the five books of Moses. So one, two, three, four, five. And mem sofid. So it's very similar, except everything is filled in. You can think of a broad race, straight down and straight across. Well, there are many more letters and uh, you know, get to take a break from writing on Shabbat, but after um, practice, practice. So let's now write together. So I'm gonna have a fresh sheet and a fresh line. And let's have a right hand column and I'm going to measure down. In this case, it's, it's three uh, centimeters, but I'm going to help by having one at one and a half as well, just so that we can have the letters be right in between those guidelines. Okay. Okay, one more thing. <clears throat> Remember, we looked at olives. And olives can be sort of an indicator of where um, the Torah was written. Shin is another indicator letter. And one way of thinking of it is that if you have a shin that is Ashkenazi, it probably has some form of pointy or maybe rounded bottom. Incidentally, it has, it has crowns. And an Ashkenazi or Mizrahi shin would tend to have more of a flattened bottom. And, you know, you could do it with these kind of rigid strokes, 
but it probably would be done, if you remember the way that the olive was done in a flowing way, something like this. So a beautiful letter. And these crowns are again, the opportunity for you to express yourself. So I'm gonna use our um, beautiful piece up here as our, as our proof text. And I invite you, I'm gonna just call out the word. We're gonna sing the word and then sing each letter. And uh, you know, if, if we get to a letter and you're done already, well, you could write the letter again or write the word again. So. Shabbat Shalom, Shin. Shin has one, two, three, and can go straight down at an angle. And then I like to turn the quill and to swoop up, down, and crowns. Another way to make the shin is straight and then curve around as well. Shin. Now, the bed of the next letter, there's the idea that if possible, you should have only a hair breadth of space in between the letters. So have your bet snuggle up close and if possible, not touch. Bed, a roof that goes straight down. Turn the quill a little bit so that it can overhang. Tav Sophie. So the Tav has a roof. And then like a Dalid, uh, it goes like that. And then imagine an upside down backwards Vav. Shabbat. Shabbat. Shalom. Leave a little bit of extra space so that we can tell that the words are separate. Shin. This is where I love to twist. Oh, if we're really excited, we can put fireworks on top of each one of the crowns. Lame. So we start about here, and there's the Vav part. And there's the cough part. Vav. Mem Sophie. Well, in our last few minutes, um, hmm? take a couple of questions. And one of one of the questions um, that I get asked often, so I, I will refer to, is, um, you know, most synagogues that I know are not functioning fully. So what is the scribe doing? And what I've been doing, I call it Ali Yad, which is writing out passages of Torah, much as we're, we're doing an exercise of writing. Um, as it's laid out in a Torah scroll, but on a single sheet, not pretending to be a Torah, but there's so many um, bar and bat mitzvahs that are happening actually at home without a Torah scroll. So um, it's been interesting, you know, I'm, I can't wait until Torahs are brought out and then when they're brought out, they, they wanna be repaired again. Um, so I, I, it's all about just keeping on playing with these letters and um, I hope you've enjoyed it. In our last few minutes, if there's again either either questions or just if you'd like to maybe just show your Shabbat Shalom or um, you're, you're you're welcome to. I, I would love to know about the practice of singing um, singing the letters while you mm -hmm. while you write them. You know, I have to say, primarily, I learned this from my teacher Eric, and I sort of hear his voice, but. If you go back to the original commandment, 613, oh, that's, oh, that's lovely. Yeah, bring them right up close. Okay, maybe at the very end, let's all hold them up at the same time and we'll, um, and uh, this, is, this is really how I understand it. Um, whether it happened in history, imagination, or it doesn't matter, it's in Torah, that 
the mitzvah is write this song for yourselves. So the idea that Torah is the song and that it's sung to Moses from God. And then Moses sings it as he copies it. And we do too. So there's a sense that I have that, uh, that when you sing, you know, you, first of all, you use more of your senses in order to experience the letter, but you're really kind of reenacting that, that, that moment of initial transmission from oral to written. And it's you know, the divine oral to our written. Um, you should try it. You know, one of the, the, um, the origins of the idea of doing these, these Ali Abayab, you know, little piece of Torah, is uh, when I did bar mitzvah tutoring, I would often encourage kids to write out the Torah passage that you're going to read and sing it, and you will experience it in a different way. There's a question here about whether most sofers, sofers do that, if most sofers sing. You know, uh, I, I don't know. I, I have to say mm -hmm. that um, when I've seen sofering working, if they're not saying it aloud, I see the lips moving. Um, I, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And there's one more question about whether you provide private instruction on on uh, calligraphy. Uh, you know, not not in a structured way. I, I, I used to love coming to synagogues and teaching classes. Um, I have to say that that this is a new world for me of, of the idea that that instruction could be done long distance and um, Listen, if you contact me, whether I teach you or I just send you materials and get you started, um, I'd be delighted to. Um, there, there's that, there's that, you know. So I, I, I see that it's 348 and I wanna hold up my Shabbat Shalom. I wanna thank you all so much. Um, the, I'm glad you're not here because if you smell the challah that's cooling in the kitchen, you couldn't sit here. <laughs> And as we um, hold it up, you know, let's just wish each other a Shabbat Shalom. It's been, it's been a, a week of the Boston Jewish Film Festival like, like no other. And uh, Yeshua Koach to you all. So, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to all of you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Lovely to see the faces from our community after a week of looking at a screen without without everyone's faces. So Shabbat Shalom and thank you, Rabbi Hale, for making That's it possible. It's really been an honor and, and, a, and, a, and a privilege and a pleasure. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shalom. Toda Rabbi. Toda Rabbi. Uh, yeah, thank you. Shalom. I enjoyed it. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, it's great. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. It's, oh, Falka. And it's Miriam's the director of the film. Um, yes, I can. Yes. I can't yes. believe you were, we were, it making, was great. We were filming Shabbat you shalom. and we were doing all that. Thank you. <laughs> I picked up calligraphy also. And so. No. Let's, okay. I, I come to Long Island more and more often to see my, my, my 98.5 year old dad. So at an arm's okay. length, we should do some writing together. So, oh, what, okay. what a, what a very pleasure. good, very good. The sun is bye -bye. getting low. I'm going to say Shabbat Shalom and thank you all, and especially Kolakavod, Miriam, and, and Randy. And um, bye. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.